Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at two specific battery pack performance values, and more specifically in this video, we're gonna take a look at exactly how you measure them without causing damage to the battery pack. Let me know in the comment section below if you record these parameters when your battery pack is brand new. One of the resources that we're going to be using here comes from the RC Explained community. If you're a member on the RC Explained Patreon community there, you will have access to download a copy of the spreadsheet that we'll be using in this video and using all the tools that we have, not just the one that we're discussing here in the video. I'll leave a link in the description below if you are interested in that. Now let's get started and talk about those two specific battery parameters and how exactly do you safely measure them without causing damage to the battery pack. Now the first parameter to discuss is one that we mention quite frequently here on the channel as it's quite important for many other reasons including specifically the performance of our battery pack but it also lets us know how the pack is aging and that is measuring the internal resistance of all the cells within our battery pack. Now we've shown this quite extensively here on the channel the process we're going to go through that again very briefly and quickly here so that we have a good understanding as to how we get this value and the most important part of it is we can use our own equipment here to do that our battery charger most battery chargers do have the functionality to measure what we're needing here in this video and then the second important part is the three parameters that we need to make sure so that we do this test very consistently today and any time in the future where we want to get an internal resistance measurement. So let's jump over to that and I'll show you exactly how I do it on my charger here today. There's a few things that we want to pay attention to and the first one that we're jumping into is the charge rate. Now I'm going to use a charge rate. I'm going to jump up the current to 6 amps and the reason why I'm selecting 6 amps is because we want to use a consistent C rate for our charge rate. So the C rate that we use is 1.5. All we need to do is take our 4 amp hour battery as you can see off to the side that our battery packs are all 4 amp amp hour we multiply that by 1.5 and that's exactly where we come to the 6 amp charge rate now that we know that we're going to accelerate this part of the video and ramp up to the one minute mark one minute is the time where we want to take our internal resistance now luckily with this specific charger it pulls an internal resistance battery spec an internal resistance measurement for us at that one minute mark making it very easy for us to get if your charger does it later then that's going to have to be your standard for your specific charge and the third third item that we want to pay attention to is temperature. Now temperature, I tried to keep it between 22.0 and 22.5 degrees Celsius. This is not always easy, but try the best that you can in order to achieve this. Here is our internal resistance measurements for these specific batteries, anywhere from 2.4 to about 3.1. Now that we got the internal resistance component here out of the way, let's move into our second battery parameter, and that is looking at the capacity of a battery pack. Now over time, as as you'd expect just like internal resistance internal resistance is going to start off as a value and in time that value is actually going to increase same thing happens with the battery capacity except in the opposite direction battery capacity is going to start off being pretty well as high as you'll ever see it and as you use that battery pack and it ages over time that capacity value is going to decrease and this is the value that we want to be able to measure because once we get between that 70 to 80 percent of the total capacity that we once had this is when batteries are essentially considered dead and I have a video that you can take a look at there online I'm going to leave a link in the description below that goes into more details about about understanding when your battery pack is essentially dead. So let's take a look at the procedure and process that we're going to use here to dive into the capacity and make sure that we're not measuring this in such a way that can damage our battery pack if we truly don't want to do that. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to use a very very old battery pack here so we can really see the damage done over years with this. This battery pack measured out over 5,000 milliamp hour when the pack is brand new and I can certainly guarantee that we're not going 
going to see over 5,000 milliamp hour today. We're going to see a value much, much less than this 5,000 mark. I'm expecting it to actually be closer to the 3,000 milliamp hour mark, but I don't know, and that's what we're going to find out here in this video. Now, one of the things that I could do with this battery pack is I could drain it all the way down to 0%, which is essentially dead. And we all know that if you do that with a lithium polymer battery pack, it can cause permanent damage to the battery. And this probably doesn't matter in this case because this specific battery pack is very old and I don't think I can really damage it that much more if I were to discharge it down to that value. But if you had a newer battery pack, you probably won't want to do that. And this is what we're going to go through here very shortly. So let's get into it and I'll show you exactly how you can do that using a specific method to avoid discharging it all the way down to 0%. Just know that this is more of an estimation, approximation. It's not going to get you the most exact value, but we don't need exact values. We just need consistent values for every time we go through this process when we're trying to understand the total capacity here in our battery pack. Let's jump right into that process. So here's a chart that shows us the capacity remaining versus voltage. We're going to pay attention to the 20% mark, which is 3.73 volts. I'll explain that a little bit later here in this section. So the discharge function is what we want to use right now because our battery is actually at a higher voltage and we need to discharge it down in order to get to that 3.73 volts that we talked about. Now what we want to use for a current rate here is a small number. I'm going to use half an amp. Now the reason I'm using half an amp because I really want the voltage to be slowly brought to that target mark. If you ramp it down really quick, what might happen here is you might not get your voltage to be very close to 373. And that's very important and we'll touch on this near the end of this section of the video. So what we're taking a look at here is the voltages that we have and how we're slowly making our way and discharging to the mark that we need to hit. Now that we've actually completed that cycle, what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the next screen here, which is going to show us the voltages. So if we go to look at the voltages that we got, we got voltages ranging from 374, 377, 371, 375. So we're pretty close to that 37 mark and that's what our goal and target is. Try your best to get to your exact target of what you're trying to achieve. My recommendation is 373. We'll talk about it very shortly here. So now what we're doing is we're starting the process where we are going to charge up the battery pack all the way from this voltage level to 100% state of charge. And we know that the 100% state of charge is actually at 4.20 volts. So once you get to 4.20 two zero volts you will then want to check in how much capacity goes in there. Now keep in mind, we do want to charge at a rate of 1C. That should be the standard through this process and why I'm charging at 4 amps. This is very common for me. I should be charging at 4.1 amps, but not too much of a difference there by being 0.1 amp off. So here's our total capacity that we've now put back into the battery pack and it works itself out to 2291 milliamp hour, which we're gonna use right here. This is the sheet that we're going to be using to make a fairly simple calculation to determine the total capacity of our battery pack. Now this version here that we're looking at today is version 1.027. This is actually not live and out yet. This is going to be ready for a June release. I release a new version of this spreadsheet. This is the RC Explained Patreon community spreadsheet. If you're a member there, you can download it. New sheet comes out on the first week of every single month. Now today we're gonna to be jumping to a newly titled sheet, a newly titled tab, and that's called LipoCalx. Now the reason why this is newly titled is because it does contain more information here in this tab than it did before where before it only really had the real lipo C rating calculator now we got something different here so what I want to pay attention to here first is the capacity remaining chart versus voltage if you pay attention to a couple areas of this chart you can see between 40 and 35 
percent. The actual battery voltage here, the cell voltage is not that different. So what's very important is if you're aiming for a certain percentage here to make certain that you are very close to that voltage when you discharge or you charge the battery up to the desired voltage. Now ideally what you should use is 20%. The reason why this is an important value for us to consider in something like what we're doing here today is because 20% is a value that allows us to have a essentially the minimum amount of capacity that you should have remaining in your battery pack and it allows the maximum amount of charge because of that to place into your battery pack. This is going to help make our results more accurate for us here today. So now let's take a look at the actual calculation of what we're doing here today. So the battery capacity state of charge as a percentage that we're going to use here today is we're going to start from that 20% mark because we did see in the video we got 3.73 volts. That's about where we started here today. So let's place that here in the calculator. Then we have the capacity that we charge back into the battery pack from that 20 to 100 percent state of charge and we saw 20 to 91 milliamp hour go back into the pack and we know that our battery pack is a 4100 milliamp hour battery pack this is going to tell us all the information that we need to know here the total lipo battery capacity from zero to 100 percent is essentially 2864 that's essentially the capacity of the pack as it stands today. It's performing exactly like a 2850 milliamp hour pack should, which is quite weak when you're considering that the pack is actually a 4100 milliamp hour pack, and it actually measured more than 4100 milliamps during the same test when this was bought brand new, and that was many years ago. Now, the percentage of battery capacity versus the new capacity that we have here is 70%. This is telling us that if our range of this percentage is between 70 to 80%, this battery pack is essentially considered dead by these capacity standards. Well, guys, that does it for this video. I hope you learned something new. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.